Hey there YouTube, this is Octo, and today I've got another episode of how to make bucket plugins, and today we're going to make items. Now, we're going to start with a simple item. When a player joins, we're going to give them a regular, maybe a diamond sword or something like that, to start them off. They will have no custom stats, names, tooltips, etc., but uh, we'll work towards getting towards that near the end, and you'll be able to make your own fully customized items however you'd like by the end of this video, hopefully. <laughs> Alright, let's jump into it. Boom. Okay, open up our Eclipse here. And you can see I've got the Hello World 2 plugin open to the My First Listener Java class. We're going to scroll down to the On Player Join here. And we're just going to open up some more space. What we're going to do is we are going to get the player. So we don't have to keep typing event.getPlayer here. That's going to be player player equals player. That's the cast in parentheses here. We're casting it so that we make sure it's a player, even if for some reason it gives us something else. All right, a little bit of lag here. There we go. Even dot get player. And we're gonna go ahead and import player. Now, whenever we want to uh, reference the player, we just type player. Boom. Simple. All right. Perfect. That'll save us some time here. So what we've got to do here is type player dot uh, get inventory this gets the player inventory there you can do a few things with it but what we're gonna do is add item alright so now arg0 is gonna be an item stack we have to create this we're gonna go ahead and call this um, item just item that'll do it alright so we have to create this item up here so item stack that's what uh, all items in the game even if they stacked up are item stacks um, some items that don't stack obviously will be their own separate item stacks. Uh, just make sure that when you make an item stack like this, it's a new item stack. Otherwise, it'll reference the original item stack and it'll change all items uh, that match that item in the game, which is going to be a really unintended effect. Uh, just make sure it's a new item stack each time you're working with it. Even if you're creating a generic item from a template, you make sure that when you give it to them, it's a new version of it. Alright, I can't stress that enough. So we're going to go ahead and import item stack here from org.bucket, of course. Equals new item stack. And I believe the syntax here is the amount you want to give them plus the material. Now, material is a generic, like, uh, variable name here. It looks like a constant. You can see they've all got some sort of constant um, name here that you can put in to give them. We're going to go ahead and see where's the diamond sword. I'm just going to go ahead and type it in here. Diamond sword and import material. There we go. Let's see what we got here. Ah, oh, right. Backwards. <laughs> so it's actually item stack material and then the amount. There you go. So say you wanted to give them three diamond swords, a stack of three, I guess, <laughs> or uh, you just type that. Uh, seems like it would give some strange uh, results. You might want to give stacks for say like seeds or stackable items, or if you want to stack, try to stack sword. You know, you can do that too. All right, so this is straightforward. We're just gonna go ahead and open up Minecraft here, and now that we've got Minecraft open, we can export our plug in here, hit export and so forth. Just get the plugin.yml, finish it up. Yes, that is correct. And then we are going to start our server up here. Making sure of course that the plugin was put in there correctly. Yep. Run. Here we go. Give it a second to load up. Alright, and now we can go to our multiplayer here. The local host. That's the server we're running, of course. And, and here we are. We've joined the game. As you can see, it has given me a diamond sword on join. So if I go ahead and disconnect and then rejoin, now we've got two diamond swords. 
So every time a player joins, they'll get a diamond sword. All right. So now you're probably thinking, I want my diamond sword to be totally custom. I want it to have a name. I want it to have stats. I want it to have a tooltip like they do in the bigger servers. Understandable. So we're going to go ahead and pull this down here and bring up Eclipse. So now we're going to create a new class here. We're going to right click Hello World 2, create new, and class. We're going to name this one um, Item Smith. That's what I call it, I believe. It's a, just a easy class template here. We're going to create this every time and call this every time um, we need to create an item. We'll run it, run it some parameters through it. So first off, we're going to create the make item method. It's going to be public. It's going to return an item stack, and it's going to be called make item. There you go. And we'll go ahead and put some parameters in here. We're going to want a material, of course. We're going to need to know what it's made of. We're going to want a name. We're going to want a description. Even if you don't want a tooltip description, I suggest adding the spot for it. Otherwise, um, none of your items will have descriptions unless you make a separate method for it. And the amount. Now, if you don't want to give a description, we're going to your item stack item. Just create the default item variable and import item stack. Now, if you don't want to put a description, you can go ahead and skip it here. Um, you can put in, say, like a default description, um, something like that when you pass the parameters. Gotta go ahead and import material as well. You can do that with uh, name as well. There you go. What's wrong with that? Oh, right. Okay, so next up we're going to create the items metadata. Name, lore, description, text, etc. All right, so the item meta, that's what that's called, item meta im, we'll call it im, equals item.get item meta, and we'll import item meta here. And this just gets the general um, meta information about the item. It's, you know, just this stuff right here. And we are going to im dot set display name. So we're getting the item meta, and we're setting the display name to whatever we want it to be. It's a, it can be a string. We're going to call it um, name here. The variable we passed into it. All right. Item stack item equals stack m one or m amount. Sorry. We have to initialize the item variable, so we have to give it some of these um, parts here. So I just, the material we give it, I put it in there. The amount we give it, I plug it in there. Boom. All right, so now that it's initialized, we can set the display name to the name that we passed in. And next we can create the lore. This one's a little more complicated. All right, so this is going to be an array list. And the array list we will have to import here. Theoretically, lore equals new array list. It's an array list of strings. So we'll import that. And what that does is it just stores some strings, like a couple of strings that you want to put in in order so you can access them. All right, so lore.add description. So each line you added to the description, you can put in here in the lore. And then you set the lore. There we go. All right. It's a little confusing, but you'll have to do that with every item. So that's why we're building a template. So we don't have to type this out every single time we want to create a custom item. All right. So now we need to hide the vanilla Minecraft old tip text. There we go. Uh, that's actually... Fairly straightforward. It's im dot add item flags. Item flag dot hide enchants. There we go. And item or im dot add item flags. 
item flag dot hide attributes. What that does in the tooltip text where usually you'll see generic information about like uh, enchantments and stuff like that, uh, you actually won't see them and you can put your own stuff in there. So it'll just show your description versus you know the generic Minecraft stuff. I you will have to import item flag as well. Alright, so next up we're gonna set the items uh, metadata. You can see I'm putting comments here just to keep it organized because it can get pretty convoluted. So we're gonna do item dot set item meta to the IM. Alright, there you go. So all that stuff that we uh, used IM for here is gonna get set to the item meta. And now we basically have an item that we can give players with all of our custom information. So we're gonna return item. And the method is complete. So we're gonna need another method. Um, and this one can be replicated and changed to create your own custom items. So um, say we want to give them a golden sword called the Sword of Midas, right? Off the top of my head. Uh, public item stack, because we'll be returning an item. Uh, build weapon. All right. And it's going to be uh, the amount here. We're going to want to know how many we want to make, of course. All right, so we need the material. So it's material dot uh, golden sword, gold sword. There we go. Uh, and we're gonna need the name. So we're gonna call it King Midas. Uh, King Midas, sort of King Midas. There we go. Sounds better. Sort of King Midas. And since it's a golden sword and it's special, we want to give it a golden name. So we're going to do chat color dot gold. And what that'll do is it'll make the name in gold. Alright, there's actually a few if you want to do chat color and then hit the dot. You can see all the different colors we got here. We're going to go with gold for this one. You can also do uh, italics. You can do bold. So say we want bold. We're going to go ahead and add a space in between them. And chat color dot bold. Okay, now when you want to do two of them in unison, say gold and bold, um, purple and italics, such and something like that, um, you can't mix two colors, but you can mix a type, a formatting type, and a color. You're going to want to put this space in between. Now, this will add nothing to the text, it just allows you to put a bold next to a color, a bolder italics. And you must put the color first. That is very important. If you put the color second, it will get rid of the bold text. And finally, if you want to reset it, you do chat color dot reset, and no longer will the text after be gold and bold. So we could put king sort of king Midas, um, and then like a an extra part like you know plus plus one life. I don't know whatever you want to put after that, and it'll come out in regular you know gray text or whatever. So there's the name. And finally, the description. It'll be very similar. You can do multiple lines here if you uh, add it here, like description one, description, and then do lore add description two. But you'll, every time you do it, you'll have to. Sorry. Every time you do it, you'll have to pass uh, description one and description two and so forth into the parameters here, as you can see there. So we're just going to go with the simple one-line description. I find that that solves our problem usually and plus you can add a uh, new line characters in here that makes it actually pretty simple so I suppose you could do that instead alright so we're gonna say just chat color dark gray that's my preferred color for tooltip text and we're gonna do it in italics there we go it's gonna say the golden sword and since um in the tool to text you don't want to put too much to stretch out the box we're just going to do a new line here that sla backslash n is basically like hitting the enter button um, since you can't just hit the enter button here because it'll give you something else entirely you have to put slash n in this uh, string here so the golden sword slash n uh, of the great king and I'm going to do another one Midas himself. There we go. 
that might not turn out perfectly, but it'll be close enough to what I want. And you can tweak it yourself to get it just right. You can put the slash in and whatever, wherever you want it. All right, and finally, we're going to do an amount. Um, oh, I'm sorry. We're going to return the item stack. So return the item with... Actually, my apologies. We're going to do return make item. There we go. And we're going to pass the value, uh, the variables into it. We got the material m, the string name, and the string description. And finally, the amount, which we already have from passing into the uh, method. And there you go. That'll create King Midas' golden sword. Uh, I know I've tripped a few steps here, but um, just keep up with me. I promise it'll be totally worth it. <laughs> oh, and this is a big one here you need to watch for. When you import chat color, you probably will get net.md5.bungie.api.chat color. That's not the one you want. Delete that. Make sure that when you import chat color, you get org.bucket. It's the second one on the list. All right, usually. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise, your chat colors will not work. You'll be sitting there wondering, why can't I get it to work? My code's fine. I've run into that problem so many times. All right, perfect. In the listener class, that we're going to need to add the item. So we've got our add item here. We're going to get rid of, I'm sorry, we're going to get rid of this part right here. It's going to be item stack item equals new, and then we're going to call item smith. It's a new item smith. All right. I'm sorry, a, yeah, a new item smith, and it's going to be build weapon. There you go, you can see it shows up there. You want to give them one of it. Perfect. And since we're not using material in this class anymore, we'll go ahead and get rid of that from the import list. And that should generate the King Midas sword. Um, go ahead and import, er, export it now. And reload our server. And then log out and back in. And as you can see, I've got the Sword of King Midas, the Golden Sword of the Great King Midas himself. Oh, and you can see there that the uh, new line characters did not parse correctly, so you will have to add individual description lines, unfortunately. So we're going to go ahead and just shorten this. And there we go. A great looking sword that um, doesn't have any extra stuff on it. You can also add enchantments and it'll still keep this nice look to it. That's all there is to creating custom items. Um, you can do this with regular items to give them custom names and stuff like that. Uh, you can create specialty items for uh, players on servers that you want to reward. Uh, and, you know, just to add a nice unique touch to your own Minecraft server. So I hope you enjoyed that. Next up, we're going to uh, start working on uh, commands so that you don't have to just wait for events to be called um, to give players items and stuff like that. You'll be able to just enter a command such as, you know, slash give sword and you'll get a sword. Something simple like that. Uh, so, you know, tune in for the next video. Hopefully it'll come sooner than this one did. <laughs> and I uh, hope you enjoyed. Leave a like and a subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Have a good one.